trim is actually broken. And the back leg at the bottom of the picture there, that's broken in half at the bottom. So those things are going to need to be fixed. And let's see what we can do with this table. These are easy fixes on the drawers. I'm just adding wood glue and a few clamps. See how tiny the details are on those dovetail joints in the back. I'm giving it a good scuff sanding by hand and with an orbital sander. I did try to fix that trim, as I said, but it was in too poor condition. And I have an idea for it. You can see that I removed the trim here and filled in the holes with some wood putty. I also repaired the veneer and the wood looks pretty good. This is where I repaired that leg with some wood putty. I used quick wood and it's a two chemical clay that you mold into whatever position you want. It hardens, hardens up really well. And I use uh, an orbital sander after I have it all chiseled.
that's a little bit of Dixie Bell mud in the color brown and it's just a soft easily sanded wood putty I'm going to use a trim product made by Wood U Bend, and it comes as a hard roll, as you can see. It will chip easily. Um, I'm going to heat it with my blow dryer and soften it up and mold it on my table. You could use a heat gun, it would probably be a lot better. It doesn't take long to heat it up and it responds really nicely to the heat. The trick to using this Wood You Bend product, at least in the trim, is to be patient. So you really have to take your time and use the heat on the product. Get it nice and soft and it won't break when you're bending it and using it. So I'm going to want that trim to turn to the left, as you can see it, at uh, 90 degrees about going around that curve of the table. So I need to put a lot of heat on it. And I have to do this a few times actually and bend it little by little. And I'm going to add a piece of tape here so it stays in place. And that's really all it takes is patience and consistency. And what you end up doing is you end up heating it and taping it into position and then you let it cool and harden that way you can pick it up and add your glue to the back and then place it back down again and you're actually going to retape it again into position and it dries really well and at this point if you needed to do a little sanding to it you could once it's cooled I'm going to be making a cut at the edge of the table now and I'm going to have to cut it so that it follows the curve on the end and I want to put a lot of heat on it so that when I cut it it will come out nice and clean.
getting it all ready for some primer. Here's two coats of primer. It's Dixie Belle Boss in gray. Okay, so I'm also going to put some caulking right on these corners just to make sure that everything is seated where I want it. And there's no spaces for anything to get altered. And so I'm just going to do a little bit of sanding of the um, patches that I've put on here uh, just to make sure that it that will take the paint okay. The color paint I'm using is Dixie Belle and it's a dusty blue. I was going to do a blend on the legs and it blended really well as always Dixie Belle just blends beautifully but it made the legs look really spindly so I painted over it in the dusty blue and the body of the table is going to be or it's painted in white it's called drop cloth and it's also a Dixie Belle paint because I'm putting a decoupage artwork on the top and on the sides I'm going to cut it in three pieces and apply it that way I will though put a blend on the drawer front. So I'm going to use Dixie Belle Blue and Drop Cloth. And I'm just going to do a little bit of shading on those drawers because ultimately I'm going to put a transfer on the, over the drawers. Here it's just a little subtle blending and I like to do it with a natural bristle brush. You can see that I primed the ducktail joints. Here I'm using decoupage gel by Redesign with Primo, and it's the first time I've used it. I really liked the way it performed. It's like a wallpaper paste, really. It's thick like a wallpaper paste, and it holds up the transfer, I'm sorry, the decoupage really well. And this decoupage is also by Redesign with Prima. It's called Skull Shane Mossere. I just love the colors in that decoupage. Here I've got the middle piece. I put it on as if it was wallpaper. Now the rest of the top of the table will also be painted. I'm going to paint it in mostly blue, but some of it will be in the colors in the decoupage so that it follows the artwork of that picture. And at the bottom, where the decoupage doesn't cover, I'm going to do a glass bead gel and I'm going to do it with a metallic blue acrylic paint with a stencil. I love all those colors in that artwork. By the way, the decoupage also gets covered with that decoupage gel. And later on, I'll add a clear coat over it. I don't think you have to, it's just my process. 
here I'm trying to line up that other part of the artwork so that it matches the top of the table. If you look toward the bottom, underneath the table it's painted blue, and then lower you'll see a rectangular tag that's actually on the table. That's the tag placed there by the original manufacturer, Ferguson. And I wanted to leave it so that it was a part of the table's history that went with it. And I'll add my tag in there too, somewhere on the back of the drawer. Though I am using a razor blade here, I end up cutting that decoupage with a pair of scissors. I'm going to add my own artwork to the back of the table, I decided. I was trying to follow this theme in the decoupage of a setting sun, but I'm going to do more stenciling around the sun in the sky, or what would we would think of as the sky, and I'll do more stenciling at the bottom where I'm had painted a golden field. The colors are kernel mustard and drop cloth in the field, and the sun is muscadine wine and flamingo. That blue paint on the table is dry, by the way, so because I'm going to do a little blending on the sun, and it, it would be a real mess if the blue paint was wet. I'm just taking off any nits in the paint and preparing it for the stenciling. And I'm going to use a metallic blue paint. Uh, it's an acrylic paint, actually. A little bit of tacky spray on the stencil. And that stencil is by Thinabare. And I, I can't remember the name of it. The blue acrylic paint is one by Art Alchemy, and the paint that I will use at the bottom of the picture there is also Art Alchemy. I like their acrylics. You're supposed to imagine yourself looking out over a field at the setting sun. So the grasses are glowing. This is this is a white paint. It's a white acrylic paint. I think it's called Pearl by Art Alchemy. And then over that will be a green metallic paint.
I'll also be shading around that picture with black wax. So this transfer is a folk art transfer, also called chinoiserie. And I love the blue colors in it. It's so pretty. And it's also very forgiving to use. I have to cut this transfer a lot. And for instance, when you'll see that I actually drop part of the lower transfer, but I just put it back on and rub it on and you never know that um, it actually had come off. I use my fingernail on some of the tiny parts of the transfer. You can see my kitty cat working really hard in the upper corner. Now you see I'm replacing that part of the transfer where it's supposed to go. But it adheres perfectly. I burnish it with my fingers afterwards, but I'll also use a soft cloth, and then I will add my clear coat. I did that off camera. And here it is, all completed. Don't you love the blue in that transfer? Here's the back of the table prior to putting the black wax on. Powered citrus shield, and I like to use that all over actually. So it everything has been clear coated except for the insides of the drawers. do the drawer slides too. I'll actually do them on the inside.
you can see that I've stenciled the sides of the drawers. Now it's been clear coated, but I'm going to go over it with some clear wax because I'm going to add some um, decorative waxes to it. So I want to give it a good a base coat of wax and that way I can move my wax around. It's been clear coated and sanded. I'll come back over it in a little bit and buff it out. Here is the table in the beginning. Let's see the transformation. Oh, look at that. You can see the glass bead gel near the front of the table and the hardware is refinished. I hope you leave a comment and tell us what you think of that refinish. Thank you for watching.